Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. How is everybody? Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be talking about Tiger King. So, wow, what a cultural phenomenon this has become. This show is basically a waste of time, and I'm not really judging it as, uh, you know, oh, it's an awesome documentary. It's a really good spotlight on stupidity, on what goes on in the world, but you've got this guy, nicknames himself the Tiger King. I guess the documentary in itself is good, but you're just highlighting some just fucking madness. It's just insanity. The show's not riveting in the sense of, um, you know, if you're trying to find out if someone's behind the poisoning the water in Flint and things like that. This is just a raw look at idiots on on so many levels. It's not even a, uh, a co- it's like a comedic tragedy, I guess. There's a element that runs through this that is highlighted in its um, editing where you, well, so much for spoilers and shit in a way, I don't give plot to us, but this is a rare exception of nonsense, so this guy Joe Exotic is in jail, and it's a story, and it kind of backtracks where it started from with this producer coming in to do a show, and the events that led up to his incarceration, but what a fucking trip. In a way, it makes you regret you spent your fucking time watching it. Because I had watched like the first episode and just hadn't didn't bother, just let it go. It's not just my cup out of cup of tea. I don't like these type of things, so whatever. The last one I watched that I kind of appreciated was Grizzly Man, which is fucking ridiculous too. But um, there's a thing about these type of shows I just don't care. And people were talking about it. Then a friend of mine online, we were teasing each other back and forth, and I said, "Okay, I'll watch it." That type of thing. So, I watched it. I'm going to watch fucking 30B movies in my spare time, especially now with this fucking, well, somewhat lockdown, I guess. So, we've got this exposed world of big cats or exotic animals being kept in people's private zoos, and they are charging people to hug them and take pictures with them, and there's nefarious things going on and there's organizations like PETA which is fucking uh, fucking idiots also but connected to them is just one woman Carol Baskin and she wants to put a stop to this type of thing especially Joe's although she'll go after anybody technically I guess and there's some shit that just fucking gets uncovered and it's just ridiculousness and I know for a fact at the end, or was it the end or was it the, there was an hour show special that came out that I watched also. And it was just a a guy I don't know. And he interviews some of the people basically. And you find out and it's hinted in the show that some of the cats were put down, but they don't tell you that. Some of the big cats are put down because they're not cuttable anymore. They're not at that age where they could interact. And it's cost thousands of dollars to feed these fucking animals. And is that there's more big cats in Texas or tigers than there are wild in the world. That type of thing. It's ridiculous. You've got these characters. It almost feels fake in its presentation. But these people are really stupid idiots. They're just deluded fucking people. Like I said, there's a part of me that's like, okay, I get it. What was the hype about it? What it, um, you know, just what it exposed. But I think in a way, I kind of knew I was always 
into nature and things. And I knew there was issues with people owning big cats and things like that. But this is just over the top insanity. This guy is just out of his mind, basically. <laughs> and it just doesn't. Um, I don't know. It's just these things don't resonate with me. I'm never really into these type of, I'm not a reality person or like even dance with the stars, things like that. I watched Survivor for like five seasons and then was like, I'm fucking done. And this feels like that. It almost feels like, um, it's a put on, it's a faking, but I don't think it is. It is just that stupid. It's just, anyway, it's not to say that the producer is not uh, on point or the cameras or whatever, but they film almost everything as he reveals at the end. There's fires and there's espionage type shit. And then there's the big reveal that he hired someone to, he wanted to hire someone to murder Carol Baskin, who he thinks murdered her husband who went missing. And it's a wars between them. And it's a struggle to keep this thing afloat. They bring in people to help. More fucking characters that are just snakes, really. And it's obvious. So, in a way, it's like, okay, how do you not get with this, what's going on, that type of thing? So, at every turn, you're like, oh, shit. There's fucking... There's, someone's going to con you. Or this is going to be a scam. And I, got, I find it hard to believe they don't see it. But it's, sometimes you're desperate. These people are fucking idiots. Whatever crack, meth, coke, weed, whatever the fuck they're doing in abundance, they don't show much on the documentary. But people who have been out of rehab. There are um, one one thing that hit home with me was uh, this young guy becomes a campaign manager for Joe Exotic because he wants to run for governor, and he's working in the trailer. And I think it's Joe's first husband on the show. I don't know how that works, if he's been married before, what other guy, whatever. But on the show, this big, tall guy, six foot, whatever the fuck it is, <clears throat> and he plays around with a gun. You don't see him, he's sitting under the camera, but the camera's right on the um, guy who's running the uh, campaign, the campaign for Joe Exotic. And the guy says something to the effect of, don't play with guns. He's like, oh, it doesn't have a clip in it. You can't fire it. He puts it up to his head and he kills himself, supposedly by accident. So that was like, because I saw the reaction of the campaign manager and it kind of resonated with me because I've gone through something like that. But other than that, what should have been the fucking big, you know, reveal of the show, there's these, you know, there is a magical feeling, I guess, there's this presence when you're playing with these cats and they're just beautiful there's just something powerful about them and even they're tiny and i can understand the connection but the cult part of it gets me sick there's no way i'm sitting there and not pitying and worrying about this fucking woman who gets an arm mauled by a tiger and it gets her arm amputated and she's coming back five days later. Oh, yeah. You know what? And even all the interviews afterwards, these are damaged people. These are people that were preyed upon, basically. And part of that's in the show where it's like, oh, this guy's at the um, train station. He's got nowhere to go. Oh, let's hire him. And that's great in a way. I'm all for giving people a second chance and don't judge a book by his cover. But by the second fucking husband he has and the the themes of the show, it just doesn't, I don't know. I mean, I get why it's so popular, but this is not something I'm looking, I, I'm going to look for a part two or a season two. This is just like, look how fucking dumb people are in this part of America. So that old George Carlin thing, uh, if you think half the people are dumb, uh, yeah, for those people, even dumber, that type of thing. It's just, you know, I mean, there's a limit to how much uh, stupidity I'll watch. And then you get kind of mad because, you know, everybody loves animals. And there's this 
really big debate about hunting, conservation, and trophy hunting. This is just a bunch of fucking assholes making money off fucking animals. And bringing in people to help out when things get bad. And vendettas for people trying to shut you down. And the people who are shutting you down are just as fucking bad. Uh, they do the same fucking things. And it's just... It is surprising how much fucking money it takes to take care of these fucking animals. So the people would know who fate the fake connection with the Joe Exotics. Well, okay, look, this animal's too fucking unruly. It's violent. It's, you can't you can't use it to cuddle and take pictures no more. Let's take it out and let's kill it. We don't have to feed it. Uh, whatever the fuck it costs, ten thousand a week or some crazy shit for the numbers. It's just. Not a pleasant thing to watch, and is it an eye opener? Sure, but uh, I don't know. I just you've been doing a podcast on it seems ridiculous, giving it any attention. But through all the shenanigans, the people he's hiring, he self sabotages. He's got on tape people are recording him, people are going to states or becoming informants, and there's a um. Uh, I guess a, a worker of someone he hires and he offers him money. The guy goes to kill him, to kill a woman. And then says he, uh, I don't know, what was his word? Something to the effect of like, I chickened out and I went with the, I spent the money. But it could have been always that he was just going to fuck the Joe Exotic over anyway and take his money. And no one goes to jail but Joe Exotic. It felt fucking weird, like... How come this documentary didn't end with all these other scumbags going to jail? So, from that point of view, I can understand Joe Exotic's uh, slant on things. But fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck everybody on that fucking show. Except for the... Maybe the guy who came in who was like a legit producer. Even if he knows, oh, look, oh, I got a gold mine here. I'm, I'm going to record this fucking maniac and you know show the world what's going on. But not even he was prepared. And the fucking studio gets, uh, the studio with all the computers, I think it was hard drives and stuff like that, but they had made a studio on this zoo fucking thing he has, and it gets burned down, and then there's all little, uh, conspiracies, you know, who did it, this is, like, evidence on there, it's just a clusterfuck of insanity, it's got a huge ratings, I bet, uh, this thing has been everywhere. You just fucking see it everywhere. And it's got a um, a following now. It's just huge. Everybody talks about it. I think there's, you know, I think it's good in a way, you know, because I watched Grizzly Man and I don't know if that did well, but documentaries just aren't my thing. And even if it's going to highlight something insane or a rock band or even something I might be into. But just not my cup of tea. There's a ton of stuff in this shit that just boggles your mind. You'll be fucking rolling your eyes. You'll be angry and fucking want to fucking, you know, beat the shit out of some of these idiots. And then there's that feeling of like, this is a cult. This is like watching a religious thing or a Waco or something is... There's some people out there who just are fucking naturally drawn to that stuff. There are people who are drawn to being the guys who are perpetrating the stuff. Uh, some talk about it in the documentary that it might have started out as a good thing. Like, okay, Joe Exotic really wanted to care for pets when he was younger. Whatever. And then it started out good. Carol Baskin wants to save animals or whatever. I think she started in the same fucking work. And then it was revealed, oh, she had to change her heart, so now she's going after people. But fucking stupid is what stupid does. It's just one fucking ridiculous thing after another on this show. And I feel bad for the people who are really changing, looking for work, um, caring for the animals. Like, I don't know what you, you told me. The had the cat be put down. I feel fucking bad. It's like what happened, and it's a bullshit lie because they're just killing them. And there are certain things about the laws, how you can transport them. Um, 
it's just fucking crazy. But I finally watched the Tiger King. I don't find it a, you know, a great experience. Like, oh, I, I'm glad I watched that. This was great. I just think it's it highlights a, a huge part of stupid people, America, whatever you want to call it, and maybe not just America. When you figure out that this is all connected in someone, you know, you got to, and then they breed them, and you, it's just. Yeah, it can get you a little angry, too. So, I'm missing that part of it. Like, you know, you got to keep these money makers going because your big cats aren't going to really make you money unless people are watching them through a cage. But they nearly get fucking killed by them. There's no fucking real plan. It's like it's like madness. But you breed them young. They kind of attach to you. You can kind of get away with things. And that's how it seems. But you'll go through a range of emotion, shock, uh, surprise, anger, sad. Like, it's just, in that case, I guess it's successful. And that's why it's so popular. But it's not something I recommend. Like, oh, watch the Tiger King. It's like, okay, you want to fucking... This is like only seven episodes. I think maybe it's eight with the um, special I was talking about. Which was... um. I think it's called The Tiger King and I. It's just uh, like a recap show. Guy sits in his fucking garage and people come on Skype. People on the show and he kind of catch up on what's going on with people. Anyway, this is not a huge recommendation. I just watched it. It's just, um, it is revealing to a certain extent, I guess. It's jaw-dropping for people. It's not the um, the thing that's going to continue. You're going to want to watch. You might want to just pick up a fucking newspaper or click on an article when you find out, uh, you know, someone's got thirty years to fucking life for doing this shit. I watched Tiger King. I don't recommend it unless you want to watch some crazy shit. But hey, to each his own. Be well, everybody. Till next time.